Hey everyone, it's Toms here. So today I'd like to talk about the Inuis Zenith MK3 music server. Now this is a music server because it does not have a built-in DAC. All you can do is just house your music. Well, it has a CD-ROM where you can use it to rip your CDs and it has a one terabyte SSD drive. So a very simple device. You do need your DAC, your streamer to use it and either a computer, cell phone or a tablet. So we are talking about 4,000 plus USD for this music server. Now, before you hit the goodbye button, because you're like, Thomas Mann, if you convince me to buy this unit, my wife or my husband is going to terminate me. Don't worry, they do have a more entry-level model. That one even has a built-in DAC, it's thousand-ish, I think. So uh, what I say in this video should apply also to the less expensive model. So if you're shopping for a music server, or even a music server with a DAC, stick around. Now, for those of you who just want to know, so Thomas, is it good or not? Yeah, it's good. All right. There's a difference when I put it in my system when compared to my own computer. So if all you care is that, all right, that's the, the, the summary. And I'll see you guys next time. Now, for those of you who want to stick around and listen to my stories, let me tell you a story. All right. So. Recently, I bought a Macintosh MS300. That was the same thing, something similar to this Inuis. It has a CD-ROM inside, you can use it to rip music, it has the internal hard drive, and that one has a DAC, so you can use it as a CD player. And then I sent an email to my friend whom I'll call Mr. Canter, because he used to own a pair of Focal Canter. He told me, Thomas, man, what the hell, what is wrong with you? Did you not see what's inside this unit? It's a computer. And he said, that, sorry, man, uh, there's no way that thing is going to sound good. But one thing I did learn, having trying a lot of different gear, is that you never know until you plug into your system. We might think that we look at the photos and we're like, oh, yeah, we know everything about it. At least my experience, first on experience, it doesn't work like that with this world stereo. One plus one does not always equals to two. So I received the unit, plug into my system, and I'm like, whoa. It has the Macintosh smoothness. So it's a signature that I recognize. So I told my friend, Mr. Kanta, dude, you got to try this thing, man. It sounds pretty good. He's like, come on, it's a computer. Bring it over. Let me listen to it. Plug into his system. He's like, wow, never could I have imagined this unit sounding so good. And this time, when I told him, hey, uh, Mr. Kanta, I have the Inuits coming in, it's like, the Macintosh it has a motherboard inside, a hard drive, a CD-ROM. This time, Mr. Kanta got smart, man. He did not criticize it anymore. And he's like, all right, bring it over. Let me listen to my system and then I'll judge it. So obviously, I'm telling you the story to let you know that until you plug it in your system, you don't know what it can do. Because some of us might think, OK, why don't I just build a computer myself? And that's a question I ask myself, too. So that's why when I got a chance to speak to Inuis, I actually asked them, what makes your unit so special? So I got some notes here, uh, getting old, can't remember everything anymore. So when I spoke to Inuis, they told me, well, there's hundreds of optimization done to this unit. So for example, you have like triple linear power supply, you have a custom motherboard with custom BIOS, you have a custom treated SSD. It has actually also custom firmware anti-vibration, EMI treatment, even the feet, the placement of the feet is not random and so forth. So everything I just mentioned, yeah, sure, it highlights the strength of the Inuits, but I don't think that's the real strength of the unit because I, I used to work in a, a telecommunication company for like 15 years. And one thing I learned working in a big company like that is that they recognize the fact that the user experience is the most important. Gear, yeah, the specs are good for promoting it, but at the end of the day, it is the user experience. And I'm glad that Inos mentioned this to me. The most important thing for them is to make the unit to be very easy to use. For example, if I want to rip a CD, I just push on the CD and I'm done. As opposed to me going to my computer, loading the software, choosing which folder to go to, and then rip the CD. With this Inos unit, very, very easy. Now, in terms of user experience, I would say they're 90% there. The reason why I say 90%, and I'm going to start with areas of opportunity first in this video, 
is because they're still working on their own software. To access this unit, you actually have to purchase a third-party software. So I purchased the Windows version, and Mr. Kanta, whom I also lent to help me review, purchased the Android one. Now with the Windows version, I find it was okay. I mean, it was quite intuitive, easy to use, but Mr. Kanta told me with the Android one, he wished that it was better. So I did ask Inuis, when will you have your own software? Soon, eventually. Now, when I hook it up to my streamer, the Lumen T2, I was able to use the Lumen software. So in that sense, I wish I found out a bit earlier before I purchased the Windows software. Well, no, actually the Windows software is great because I got a chance to use Tidal with it too. So the second area of opportunity is actually not Inuis' fault, but rather, Depending on your DAC, it might not work with this Zenith. So the rule is this. If it does not require any Mac drivers, it will work with this Zenith. And this is unfortunate because my main DAC, the XSL E28, which I'm really familiar with, did not work with this Inuit Zenith. So before you buy this unit, make sure that your DAC does not require Mac drivers. And so therefore, this evaluation is not going to be in-depth because I didn't spend enough time with it with my own reference stack because I couldn't. All right, so let's move on to the strength of this unit. Now, first of all, as I mentioned before, ripping a CD is very easy. Once it's set up, it is actually easy to use. Just take out your cell phone, your tablet, and you can access this unit within 30 seconds after you press the power button. You don't have to go through the whole complicated boot up sequence of your computer and then load J River, for example. This with your cell phone, very easy to use. So how does the Zenith sound in my system? Now, once I replace my computer with this unit, the first thing I notice is that I get darker background. Now, darker background is difficult to explain because if you ask 10 people, 10 people will give you 10 different answers. So I'll try to explain more how I feel when I use this unit. Number one, when I put it in my system, it calms me down. I noticed that everything just quiets down. There's more clarity with the instrument, in between the instruments. So I find myself latching on more to the musical instrument. And because of that, I find myself wanting to shut down everything and just really focus on listening. This is embarrassing for me to say. A lot of time, browse the internet and listen to music at the same time. But with this Inuos unit, I want to turn off my computer. I want to turn off my TV. I want to enhance that quietness as much as I can so that I can hear deeper into the recording. Now, the second thing I notice is that with the Zenith MK3, my system sounds more fluid. I don't mean in terms of smoother because smoothness, you can always achieve it, let's say by rolling the top end treble off, but rather a sense of ease, effortless. And this is something I notice whenever I bring in something that is higher end into the system. For example, the Lumen T2 that I got recently, that also has that characteristic. And this is something that you need to A-B test to hear the difference between, let's say, uh, a budget streamer and a higher end streamer. Now with the Zenith and my computer, I do hear the difference. It feels effortless with the Zenith. And by the way, coincidentally, a few manufacturers also send in their gear for review and they all happen to be high-end stuff. So what luck, I got a chance to build a pretty decent reviewing system and that allowed me to really hear the strength of this Inuis MK3. Obviously, if you're shopping for something like this, your system better be reviewing. Now, for those of you who own it and have never tried using it with Tidal, you should give it a try because it does sound different than when I use it on my computer. Just before I wrap it up, I want to quickly share Mr. Cantor's experience of this unit. For us, CD is the best source when we want to do critical listening. Because a lot of the songs that we like are not in high res. That's why we have pretty good CD players. And one of our concern is always, if I rip everything onto a computer, do I lose fidelity? So I had Mr. Cantor A-B tested against his CD transport. So the DAC was the C47, the CD transport was the Krell, and then the Supernova, the Moon Supernova. And then we A-B tested against this music server. So we're A-B testing things in about the same price range. 
And you know some gear you need to go into meditation to hear the difference? Mr. Kanta told me he had to go into second level meditation, meaning that he has to close the light to really hear the difference between the CD transport and this unit. Now, eventually he did say the CD transport is probably 5% better. And we're like, maybe it's the cable because one uses USB cable and one was using coaxial cable. So the point is that if you want to rip all your CDs, I have hundreds of CD into this unit and clear your place, this is definitely a great solution. All right, so let's wrap it up at this point. Now, for those of you who don't follow me, at one point in my audio journey, one of the reasons why I built my system the way it is, is to chase after my friend's system. Now he has a $300,000 system and eventually I gave up because I knew that I was not able to reach anywhere close to what his system can do. One thing I did notice though, when I plug in this Inus into my system, I felt like I was one step closer to his system. This dark background, clearer sound, fluidity, I recognize it in his system because I hear his system all the time. Now, after having spending time with this Zenith MK3, I have to admit, I am curious how their entry-level model performs. That one's a thousand-ish, even has a built-in DAC. Imagine, because of the law of diminishing return, that unit is 80, 90, 95% of what this Zenith MK3 can do. That would be an incredible buy. Um, that's just my sneaky way of telling Inuis, send me the entry-level model for review. Just kidding. Or am I? Anyway, so thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.